Welcome to the Family Beacon Podcast from Minnesota Family Council with hosts Grace Evans and Moses Bratrude. Stay informed on the top stories on life, family, and religious freedom. Get the facts, stand for truth. Hello and welcome back to the Family Beacon Podcast. My name is Grace Evans. I am here today with a very special guest, Representative Tim Miller. Let's give him a round of applause, guys. Wow, we're so excited he is here. We sat down to film and he said, um, Grace, you did not tell me that it was going to be videoed as well as audio. I had so, no time to do my hair or makeup. This is true. So here he is. Um, he said that he actually considered showing up in a hoodie, right? Am I exposing you too much to say that? Yeah, so something <laughs> about hoodies, I think they mean something different in rural Minnesota <laughs> than, than in the cities because my good friend Matt always criticizes me that I show up in a hoodie, but out by us, it's windy. You have to keep your ears covered. So, <laughs> So anyways, he is here. And I'm so grateful. And he is here. Representative Tim Miller is here to talk a little bit about pro-life activism, how he is winning on life here in the state of Minnesota, how you guys can get involved, how you can track his progress, and also a little bit of why he's decided not to run for re-election, but instead to form a completely new initiative to help save children from abortion. So I'm just thrilled that you're here, Tim. Thank you so much for joining me. Can you just give us a brief summary of what you do, and then we'll get into more of the specifics? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Grace, for Mm -hmm. having me here and thank you everyone who joins in. Uh, Be sure and listen to this weekly. This is the best way to get information out there. So if you like what you hear today or other other, uh, podcasts, Mm -hmm. please be sure and uh, share that with other people. So about a year ago, Brian Gibson of Pro-Life Action Ministries came to me with a concept that I Mm -hmm. like so much I said, can I do it? Yeah. So so we formed a new organization. Pro-Life Action Ministries formed a new C4 mm-hmm. called PLAM Action. M is in mother, PLAM Action. And the thrust of what we're going to do is, is at the grassroots level, so community by community, we're going to be talking about not only what the abortion industry is doing, but how we can defend against it. It's a very unique model. Uh, that has been done in in other states. It started down in Texas about three years ago, and we pass pro-life ordinances Mm -hmm. at the city level that to this point, and we're confident moving forward, has withstood judicial review and challenge. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That kind of transitions well into my next question, which is just if we can, we've talked about this on the podcast before, Tim, but if we can kind of remind people what we're up against here in Minnesota, I mean, we've got just the pill, we've got recent strike downs of a lot of protections for people that are abortion minded here in Minnesota, for women that are abortion minded. A lot of those have been struck down. Um, We've talked about how we don't want Minnesota to become an abortion destination. Can you you kind of just like set the narrative, explain again what we're up against for our people? Yeah, Grace, I can set the narrative with with an example that's Mm -hmm. very real. So right now, because of Minnesota court review, uh, a school counselor can take a girl from the school in for an abortion. They can have the abortion, go back to school, and the parents will not know about it. And mm-hmm. it's perfectly legal to do that. Mm-hmm. I think that should spell it out for most Terrible. people. There are, there are many other examples. But in Minnesota, we are unrestricted. And I really want to make a point unregulated on abortion through live birth. Mm-hmm. We don't even need a doctor or a clinic for a surgical abortion anymore mm-hmm. in Minnesota. Yeah. It's heartbreaking. And it's so it's so unsafe for women, too, because we don't want women going into these facilities that aren't licensed, right, that aren't safe for them. And not only that, but also the innocent children that are being lost. And so, like you just said, this is happening here in our state. That's one specific story. But basically, we're up against a lot here in Minnesota. We've got a lot of things that have just been struck down by a recent court decision, a lot of protections that would have protected women in certain circumstances from abortion, especially minor girls, because now children do not have to get consent from their parents to get an abortion. Um, girls can just go ahead and get their get an abortion without their parents ever knowing. And so that's another bad thing. But also we've got just the pill, right? We've got pills. You, you tell our audience more about yeah, that. Yeah, so what I think people need to understand is, uh, you know, I – I think people believe that, okay, we have these abortion clinics in Minnesota. They're mostly in the Twin Cities, Rochester, and Duluth. And that's bad. Mm -hmm. That that alone is bad. But there's always been this destination, 
You have to go somewhere. Well, that's not the case anymore in Minnesota. So we have a company called Just the Pill that formed in 2020 under the cloak of of uh, COVID, COVID. The emergency. You There's know. only two industries that stayed completely open during COVID. One was liquor stores, and the other was the abortion industry. Mm-hmm. Totally unfettered. And so, Just the Pill was a business that formed started. To, they started by doing mail order chemical abortions. Mm-hmm. And so, this is a two pill process. You get in the mail at home. You go through this over three or four days. It's horrific. They also have started a mobile vehicle that's going throughout Minnesota, which, mm-hmm. by the way, we'll get into this a little, little bit, but they're targeting rural Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're sending this mobile vehicle around also delivering chemical abortions. And if not to be outdone by that, they're in the production, the planning and production phase of a mobile surgical unit so they can go to a small town near you in rural western Minnesota mm-hmm. where I live and do surgical abortions mm-hmm. without a doctor, right. without a clinic setting. Mm-hmm. They're able to do this in Minnesota. And so one of the things with when we get into really what we're doing city mm-hmm. by city, you have a small community that says, well, we don't have an abortion clinic, nor would we ever have one in town. That no longer matters. If you have mail, you're going to have abortions that are potentially coming in there. And again, uh, There's a lot of egregiousness, if that's a word, but Mm -hmm. this is very egregious. Um, Children can be doing this without their parents' Mm -hmm. knowledge. It's it's just disgusting. Yeah, I think that helps us paint the picture well because we've talked about a lot of these different components in the podcast before, but I think it's good to lay it all out for our listeners because all of these things are happening in Minnesota. Of course, people like Tim Miller, people like us here at Minnesota Family Council, we are rising up against this great injustice and we are fighting tooth and nail to prevent these sorts of situations from happening because we know life is precious and we know that women deserve protection from abortion. And so that's why I'm really excited to get into more of what you're doing, Tim. It brings me joy every time I think about what you're doing on the daily, truly connecting with people all across Minnesota and creating a pro-life Minnesota. So tell our audience about your I Am Human campaign and exactly what you're doing in different cities here in our state. Yeah, and Grace, I just have to say it's always a pleasure. You're always such an encouragement. Mm-hmm. You are you are a woman who is is unabashedly pro life and fearless before God. And that's really mm-hmm. as us believers, that's something that we need to really understand that quite simply God is about life and He's on our side in this. There's no there's no guesswork on this. And if if God is for us, who can stand against us? That's so absolutely true. true. So so what we're doing is is what we're Okay, there's a couple things I want to talk mm-hmm. about. You reference the I am human. The difficulty, and I've noticed this in the legislature, even before the legislature, is in all the conversations which can be had. We can talk about a woman, okay, and the circumstances that she's in. But we never talk about the child. Mm-hmm. And so the question that I raise is, that is that unborn human being, are they a human being? Mm-hmm. And of course they are. And so part of our marketing campaign has been the I Am Human. And it's very simple. You might see a billboard. You might see some other advertising where this manifests itself. But we have a 16-week-old Gabriella. We have to Mm -hmm. talk about Gabriella. We definitely will. I'm going to ask you about her. So we have 16-week-old Gabriella and a picture of her. And it simply says, I Am Human. Mm -hmm. We need people to have this conversation. And I will tell you that when you bring the truth to light... It makes it very difficult to throw these other things in that face. Because what I argue is, is if Gabriella is a human being at 16 weeks, Mm -hmm. then should she not be protected the same way that all, protected and respected as the same as all of the human lives that God has created? And the answer is yes. Absolutely. I think that gets back to one of the points I repeat a lot when I'm talking to especially students, but honestly, anyone in Minnesota that is even distinctly pro-life or is thinking about the pro-life movement, as I say, you really, we really win on, on this issue when we emphasize the humanity of the preborn. when we always bring it back to that. Because when we bring the conversation back to what we're actually talking about, which is the fact that every human being deserves respect and protection and deserves that chance to live, that's when we win, right? When we get like sidetracked by all these other conversations and we forget to emphasize the humanity of the preborn, I think that's when we get off traffic, get off topic, I should say, and we begin to kind of get in the weeds. But really this conversation is about, is this child a human from the moment of conception? And B, 
is this child worthy of a protection? Absolutely yes to both to both both of those questions, right? You know, one one of, one of my heroes is William Wilberforce. Mm-hmm. And for people that don't know, in the late 1700s, he effectively, with a group of other people, ended the slave trade in England. And the most effective work was when he started bringing members of parliament out to the slave ships and say, this is what we're talking about. And so Gabriella and some of the other things we're doing is, is just bringing real light to who it is that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. The abortion industry cannot talk about these things because they want to steer you to philosophical, technical, aggressive attacks about, you know, do you not respect women? These are all lies. And one of the things that we also hope to do is to not only uncover those lies, but give good answers, equip people Mm -hmm. to be able to answer those tough questions when they say, well, what about the woman? And I hope we get into that a little bit here as well. Yes, definitely. Let's talk a little bit about your slogan, if you will, or the trifold mission of Plam Action, which is inform, equip, engage. Because that kind of is what we're talking about, how we want to inform the audience, we want to equip them, but we also want to engage. So if there's anything you want to add on to about the inform and equip part, feel free to do so. But then we want to talk about the engagement for sure. Yeah. So I'm by nature a strategic planner. That's what I do and uh, have done before in my career is helping nonprofit organizations with their mm-hmm. strategic plan. You have to have a plan. You need to let God take it where he wants, but you need to go through these things. And and the three words, as you said, inform, equip, and engage yep. are really what it is that we're doing. And so informing is telling people what's happening in Minnesota in the abortion industry, but then also informing them of what how we can do something to fight against this. Mm-hmm. And then the next step is equipping people. Yeah. The great thing about grassroots efforts, everyone's qualified to participate in some way. And that's really the message. When I'm in so front true. of when I'm in front of ten people or two hundred people, and I've been in front of both I say everyone in this room has the ability to do something. We have a prayer network that you can join, but there are people that have skill sets. They like making phone calls or they, you know, there is, there is a a woman that I was talking to earlier from Southeast Minnesota, Mm -hmm. who's just a prayer, prayer word. And she prayed over me and and I don't want to diminish prayer, but I'm saying people know that they can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has to get in front of a group of people. Not everyone has to lead a podcast on this. We have people that have marketing skills that are going to help with this. We have probably one of the top attorneys on the life movement that are working with us. I don't need a bunch of attorneys that can do that. In a grassroots effort, we can do that. So we equip people to help with this grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. And then once we build that army, once we build this team, whether it be in a single community or statewide, we engage the subject. Mm -hmm. And we do it without fear and we do it without confidence because we have God leading the way. But then we also have a bunch of people doing the work together and working in working in harmony with each other towards that single goal. Mm-hmm. This is a very powerful movement. Uh, I, I talked to some students earlier today, and I raised the question, some high school students, and I said, grassroots movements have been used throughout history, but especially in the United States. And I said, to this point, what was the single greatest change in policy of the United States? Hmm. And I asked it in a way to where they were like, you know, what? And I said, it was slavery. Hmm. Slavery was ended in the United States off of people getting together in their living rooms, in their churches, saying, we need to do something about this. I have chills. This is so true. It's absolutely true. So grassroots efforts seem small in the beginning. They Mm -hmm. seem humble. Humble. How can we overcome these things? But it builds such a force that cannot be stopped. I love everything you're saying. You know, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a go fight win kind of girl. Like, let's do this. We're in the fight to win it. Let's mobilize. Let's act. And this is just like music to my ears. Even though I've heard you talk about it so many times. I just get so excited. (laughs) For us boomers that drive your generation crazy, okay, uh, the World War II effort was really the mobilization of a nation Mm -hmm. is what happened. And everyone participated in some way. You have Rosie the Riveter. You have the people that went off to war. You had people that sacrificed sugar. You know, they didn't get new tires on their car. So they're, they're, but as a nation, we mobilized towards a singular goal to end fascism, and it was successful. Mm-hmm. That's what we need to do on the life front. 
Tim, I think that the point you're drawing is so crucial to this debate. I think that when people realize that they can change the narrative of history by simply speaking up and doing what they are good at for the sake of a cause like this, it changes it changes everything. And that's what I tell people when I'm speaking to them, when I'm speaking to students especially, is I say, you may think that you are just a girl or a guy who cares. And you may feel insignificant, but let me tell you, that is the biggest lie. Like, that is the lie that Satan wants to feed you. He wants the opposition, like, nothing better than for you to believe that you can't make a difference because you're one person. But guess what? That is so untrue. And if we all work together and we all just do what we're good at, we can we can totally change the narrative. I mean, my pro-life activism looks like speaking, a lot of speaking events, a lot of podcasting, a lot of media things, but other people's may look totally different. Like what about the role of pregnancy resource centers? We absolutely need them in the movement. What does it look like to go and volunteer at those resource centers? There are things that you can do with your gifts that look different than my gifts. And if everyone's pro-life advocacy looked just like mine, I think we'd actually not be in the greatest place. I think we need people at all different areas, in all different stages of life, doing absolutely different things all towards the same goal. Well, and here's another great thing that came to mind is is when we are obedient to God Mm -hmm. and we do these things that we are capable of, the ordinary can become extraordinary. And the story that I thought of, you know this story, but up in Moorhead, uh, we had an abortion clinic just move right over from Fargo this summer. There's very little that we can do. We go up and have a rally up there and we spoke to about 200 people and said, with, with, we did a tent, like a tent revival meeting. It was fantastic. But the stage was set to where the, you could see the abortion clinic right behind us. And I was on stage and I gave this message. Everyone in here can do something. Mm-hmm. And there's this young woman, 21 years old, Cassie, who called me about a couple weeks later. Yes. And, and she said, um, I was there to be informed and be excited, but I didn't think I could do a whole lot in this. She went from that to where she formed, organized, and executed a 40 Days for Life where they had people praying out in front of the abortion clinic from 6 in the morning to 10 at night for 40 straight days. Chills, She organized this with some of her friends literally in about two or three weeks' time. Amazing. That's the amazing thing that can happen when Mm -hmm. people are willing to step forward and do something. Yes, so true and so inspiring. It is so great to see young people stepping up and just using their gifts. I think that if there's any key message you can take from this is if you can use your gifts, you should use your gifts to further the pro-life message. And your gifts are different than the person next to you. And that is actually a great thing because we all have different things to contribute. So, wow, I'm honestly just getting even more and more excited as we go on. So tell me about, so we're doing we're doing this with, with PLAM, right? You are going and you are activating people, building this grassroots, grassroots coalition and making it so that they get involved, they get activated, they get excited about this cause. And then, what else are you doing on the city ordinance front? That's right. There's yeah, more to there this. Is this more. is There's, actual meat to we're it. We're just like peeling back the layers. <laughs> we actually have legal substance to what it is that we're doing. Facts. Yes. we. So in Minnesota, it is a true statement that effectively we can do nothing to make abortion illegal. We can do almost nothing to really kind of control it through illegal. Like you can't do this sort of thing. But that doesn't mean we don't have any tools. And this is real significant what we're doing, and this was proven in Texas. So we can go to a city, and they can pass an ordinance. Yes. doesn't make abortion illegal. It says anyone that performs an abortion is subject to a lawsuit by another individual, mm-hmm. a civil lawsuit. And there's, there's lots of legal argument, posturing, and stuff like that. But this has been defended all the way up through federal court mm-hmm. that it stands. You can, you can do this. And so if we go into a community and rally into a city, them. rally them. Mm-hmm. We work with them, the individual city council, lots the faith leaders, lots of meetings. And we pass this. Not only are you saying this town is going to defend life, but we can actually effectively end abortions in mm-hmm. that community. But there's more because so like the small communities I'm going to in rural Minnesota, they're like, well, big deal. If we do this, the next town over can still get these abortions. Right. But this creates think of just the pill and Planned Parenthood as a business. You know why? Because they're multimillion dollar and in case of Planned Parenthood, billion dollar business. Okay, that's what they're about. Anyone that has a business or works in a business understands that you can't have liabilities. You cannot have legal liabilities out there. So you start getting these towns that pass these ordinances, 
they're exposed legally, mm -hmm. which becomes a problem for them. Mm -hmm. when, it's a good thing you got a solution. <laughs> so the, the big city that really made its mark in Texas, they were going along getting communities, and then they passed this life ordinance in the city of Lubbock, Texas, mm -hmm. which is about a little over 100,000 people, significant size town, and it had a Planned Parenthood in it. The city, or, the city passed this ordinance, and Planned Parenthood immediately stopped operations. Wow. Now, that is the power. That's the power. Mm -hmm. Now, the ACLU took it to court, of course, right? No mm -hmm. surprise there. That's where we found that the city of Lubbock won. Wow. They won. And then it went to federal court, and they won. Wow. Yeah. So, so this can really happen. Um, is one city going to change things? Maybe, maybe not. It will save lives. It will, it save, will lives. save lives. In and of itself, it's going to save lives. Mm -hmm. But I'm excited about where this is going to move. My, my many years in Minnesota politics, I know the way these things work in the state of Minnesota. This exposes the abortion industry, and they know it. Mm -hmm. How do I know it? Because when we just had a story in the newspaper, Attorney General Ellison sent a letter and said, you can't do this. Now, this is, yeah. by the way, this is the Attorney General of the state of Minnesota with all the legal resources that he has. Mm -hmm. The letter that he wrote to the city of Princeburg never once had an actual legal he was just threatening. He was just threatening, mm -hmm. which is significant because yes. if he had a if he had a legal, you can't do it because of this. If he had a this, reason, he would have stated it. You better believe he would he have. He would have stated it. He doesn't have it, and yep. they know that. So here's the other side. So this is why we need people to be praying mm -hmm. is uh, their tactics are bullying tactics. They're threatening tactics. They are um, – I've had some very interesting phone calls yeah. and emails since then. Um when I say interesting, I'm talking profanity-laden and things like that. But that's, that's okay for me. I don't expect other people to have to deal with that. But this is what we're up against. Yeah. But here's the, here's, the good, here's the good news. First of all, the good news is the good news. Absolutely. We're on God's side and we're going to win. <laughs> that's right. But the good news is, is those words carry absolutely no power mm -hmm. as, unless we give it power. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things when we talk about inform, equip, and engage, yes. we do want to equip people. We don't ask everyone to be public speakers, but, you know, we, we saw this with the, with the same-sex sex marriage stuff 10 years ago. There's a lot of Christians who weren't really sure how to answer the question of, well, can't love just be love? Or marriage is just a contract, you know. Someone wants health insurance or something like that. We weren't yeah. equipped to address where the lies were and what the true statements were. We can do that on the life front. We can talk about, you know. So, I was, again, I was talking to students this morning. Mm -hmm. And I said one of the lies is, is that as a Christian pro-life person, that I, I hold a woman who's had an abortion in judgment. Mm -hmm. And I said, when you speak in front of a group of 10 or more, there is someone in that room, statistically, that has been either directly or very closely affected by an abortion. They are post-abortive. Yeah. And so the lie that Satan tells them is, is you're, you're, you know, these people are judging you and, and all these negative things. And I tell people, I do not, I do not condemn you. I do not judge you. Mm -hmm. God, the creator of this universe, does not condemn or judge you. He loves you and wants you to wants to come into relationship and feel his warmth and his peace. Mm -hmm. The abortion industry says that guy Miller, he's he's telling you you're a bad person. And that's and I know that some people that are watching this, that's what they feel like people are going to come and attack them mm -hmm. on. So we need to be able to help people. That's one of the things that we want to do. We're putting together a series of videos yeah. and some other tools. That, so, for example, uh, one of the videos we're going to have out within this month explains in about three or four minutes what this whole ordinance thing is. That's amazing. I so love that. You, that's right. Yeah. So, you, so you don't have to say, well, there's this organization. It's, it's planned something. I forget what it is. Yeah. You can just say, here's this video. Here's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Contact them if you have questions. Yeah. 
And it's doable. That's something that someone can do. It's a great way to reach the general public, I think, because if it's a short thing, then they don't have to listen through like 40 minutes of an explanation or read a whole web page. It's just a three-minute video or however long. They get the information, they get the facts, and then they can go stand for truth, which ironically is the kind of our slogan here at the podcast is get the facts, stand for truth. But I think it actually applies to what you're doing is we want people to get the facts and stand for life, right? And I think your point that you were making over the past few minutes was so good, um, just how we aren't going to be able to change politics or change our laws unless we change the culture, right? Because politics is downstream from culture. And so what your organization is doing through many, many different facets is we you are working to change people's hearts, which is what Minnesota Family Council is also doing, change people's hearts and to lessen the demand of abortion organically. Like you are going in and you're going to help people understand that abortion is not a solution. It's actually a grave violence against a woman and a child. And so people are not going to want to go get an abortion and the demand will be lessened and people's hearts and minds will be changed. And so when we do that, we're really winning. And then we're set up perfectly to go change the laws, change the politics on this issue. And so I think what you're doing is so fundamentally important, especially here in Minnesota, where Yes, I think it's easy to get depressed or be gloomy sometimes about the state of the politics. But the thing is, once we change the culture, we have a great shot at changing the policies and law, right? Amen. That's that's exactly the point that we're making. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about your, let's talk more about the media aspect of what you're doing, because I'm really excited about your Gab- Gabriella initiative. So why don't you explain, you've explained like what she is, who she is, the, a beautiful little baby girl, but explain more about that initiative. Okay, well, we we kind of organically came upon a good idea Mm -hmm. that you and I talked about. And and, and for the listeners, I really trust this young woman. She she gets it, and she's so highly skilled. I'm always a little bit nervous being around her because (laughs) she intimidates me a little bit in a good way. Thank you. (laughs) So anyway, we noticed. So we've been doing billboards. We've been doing signs for the people that do counseling outside an abortion clinic. And it's simply a sign that has an unborn child at a certain number of weeks. And and the original posters just had the picture and said, like, 16 weeks. And on the other side, it said, abortion kills a human being. Great message. And we still do that. But we expanded on that a little bit. So we have billboards and we have some other signage that say, that have a picture of this 16-week-old baby. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. We gave her a name. Now, we have three different names, but Gabriella seems to be the one, Mm -hmm. I don't know, that just... It's great. It's great. So it'll say 16 weeks old, Gabriella, and then the sign will say, I am human. Yes. The, the the great thing about that, first of all, it's the truth, so that's great. But Absolutely. the great thing about that is is you can't argue that, right? Like you, yeah. you can – we've seen people get very upset at these signs, but I think they're getting upset because what are you going to say? That's not a baby. That's, that's just a clump a of cells. Oh, yeah, wait, it looks like a, a baby. <laughs> totally, looks, totally looks like a baby. So uh, – Or they'll say that's a baby. Oh, oops, I said it's a baby, but I think that it's okay to murder that baby. Oops, and then you got him again, right? And that's that's what makes them feel uncomfortable is because they know that it's a baby. Well, and to that point, one of the rather colorful phone messages I got this last week, the person chose to call me and say, um, I don't like what you, you're you doing, you bleepity bleep person. I wish your mother aborted you. Which points to their admitting that a human being came out of me being born, right? Right, right, so right. It's, the it's logic. Kind of, the, the logic doesn't hold. But with Gabriella, mm-hmm. um, I contacted you. Yes. Threw out an idea. You liked it. Loved it. So social media is an, a very important tool, and it's a good tool, but it can be challenging, especially on this subject matter. So quite simply put, me saying something on Facebook carries a certain degree of truth to it, but I always say it's what people are hearing, not what they're, what you're saying. And so we came up with this idea for Gabriella to have her mm-hmm. own social media presence. 16 weeks old. 16 weeks old, Gabriella. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's primarily on um, Twitter and yep. Facebook right now. We're going to expand that. Yes. As much as I hate the... The platform, we're going to be doing some TikTok stuff. Yep, we do the same thing. It's We can use it for good. That's right, that's right. <laughs> we have so, to reach but, people. But anyway, Gabriella can say things yeah. that Grace and I can't say. Absolutely, yep. And it's impactful. Mm-hmm. And to the point, uh, um, Gabriella, a couple weeks back, had someone who 
said some bad words, okay? Wow. And Gabriella's response was kind of a giggle, and I think I heard my mommy say that word once. What does that mean? <laughs> Isn't that disarming? The it naivety really of a child. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so we're real excited about this, and I actually see where we're going to be using uh, Gabriella as a, as a person to express a lot of different... I call her my little influencer. She is. She's a, she she's is a little your little influencer. influencer. So that, that I guess that would be one little plug right now is is if you're on Twitter mm-hmm. or Facebook, look for Gabriella. Yes. You won't miss her. And, hey, I'm uh, Gabby at Hey, I'm Gabby. Yep. <laughs> yep. Her name's Gabriella. My friends call me Gabby. So such a good catchphrase. I will have Gabby's Twitter and Facebook linked in the description below, as well as Pro Life Action Ministries or Plam Action, I should say, their website in the description below. Um, Tim, as we right before we bring this episode in for a landing, I just I wonder if there's anything else you'd like to leave our audience with. If there's anything that you feel you want to really emphasize about your mission at Plam Action, and then of course we will tell them how they can get involved and stay involved with your organization. Yeah. Thanks. What, what comes to mind so when I talk to the media when I talk to a, um, a reporter they kind of ask this question mm-hmm. is there anything else that you want to say yeah. now in media training you usually politely say no thank you uh, because that's when you effectively your guard is down right but I take the opportunity to say something that I'm going to say now mm-hmm. that they never ask but they have actually published in as much as as high up as the Star Tribune and this is what I say. Different different versions based on the interview, but I go, this is looked at as sort of like a political movement, but it's not. This is a spiritual reality. There's a darkness in the mm-hmm. state of Minnesota. And God is the giver of light. Mm-hmm. And by the way, in John it says, the darkness has not overcome that light. Yeah. So I tell people, I tell these reporters, I say, this is this is under God's control. He is going to take us in a direction um, that we need to go. He's going to be glorified, and in the end, he's going to win. To the point when a Star Tribune reporter the other day said, you know, well, you have Attorney General Keith Ellison coming after you. What do you say to that? And I said, my answer to you, the reporter, is, is I have the creator of the universe on my side, and I will take that over Keith Ellison 100 times Boom. out of 100. Boom. What I have found is, is that the media is including mm-hmm. my faith mm-hmm. in what they're reporting. We're told we aren't allowed to talk about our faith or they'll shout us down. They don't. So my point to this long run on answer here is, is if there's anything else I want to say, be committed to this with your Christian faith. Mm-hmm. God is doing incredible things in the state of Minnesota Things that we can't even conceive of that he's working on right now. Wow. My job, Grace's job and your job, is to be obedient to the calling that God has given you. Let him get the glory. Let him be the protector, the defender. And amazing things are going to happen in the state of Minnesota. Tim, that is a great note to end on. So let's say people are listening here. They're so excited about your organization, the work that you are doing to really inform, equip, equip, and engage people here in Minnesota. And they they want to get involved. Like they want to understand what you're doing, get emails about what you're doing. What can they do to get involved and to take action? Great. So the first thing that you want to do is go to our website. That's PLAM Action, Pro-Life Action Ministries Action. So PLAMAction.org, P-L-A-M Action dot org. Mm-hmm. There you can find out more information. You can sign up for a newsletter. We ask people, we challenge people with two things. Uh, number one, join our prayer network. We want true people of prayer to join. It's a very private group of people. We have just about 100 people right now from across the state of Minnesota. You can join and you'll get a, an update on things to pray on. Pray on. That's something that you can do. We are really targeting small donor contributions. Mm -hmm. So one of the difficulties is is this is going to this is an engine that's going to require fuel. Absolutely. And in the long run, quite a bit of money. But here's the exciting thing. In politics, the small donor is where it's at. Mm -hmm. Governor campaigns and even presidential campaigns raise incredible amount of money by someone just saying, you know what, I'll commit to ten dollars. Yep. It's all we're asking. And so you have an opportunity to do that. 
go to the website. You can sign up for things. You'll see contact information there. Mm -hmm. Um, When I've spoken in places, people say, can I call you? I give them my cell phone number. Uh, When we were coming in, when I was driving in today, I spoke for over half an hour with a young woman who just wants to get involved down near Rochester. That's great. That I had never met before last Friday night. So you will get a conversation from me. Um, I talk about how anyone can do anything, but there are people with very special skill sets. And we certainly need your help as well. We're doing uh, professional quality video work. We're doing we're doing other communication things that are of top notch value, mm-hmm. and we need people that are able to do that. The other thing you can help us with is if you know a community, your community mm-hmm. is a community of faith. You think that they're pro life. You think that people on the city council would be open to talking about yeah. this. I need to know about He's that. He's your town. man. He's I'm your the man. person. Mm-hmm. Is that, is that enough things for Absolutely. people to do for today? Yes, that is great. So I will have Plam Action's website in the description below for you guys. And I will also have Gabriella linked. Tim, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We are so grateful here for you here at Minnesota Family Council, both uh, as you're in your work as a pro-life legislator. And we are sad to see you not running for re-election. But at the same time, we know that truly excellent things are coming with your work saving children from abortion uh, in this new role. And so we're we're so grateful for our close friendship, close alliance with you, and we really just look forward to seeing what God will do. Thanks, Grace. It's been my pleasure. Thank Absolutely. you very much. So you guys, don't forget to tune into the Family Beacon podcast every single week. We will have a new episode out next week, every single Friday. And if you liked this episode, make sure you share it with your friends and get involved in the pro-life movement. We are winning here in Minnesota. We are changing hearts and minds, and change starts with you. Get the facts. Stand for truth. Thanks for listening to or watching this episode of the Family Beacon Podcast from Minnesota Family Council. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you're up to date on life, family, and religious freedom. You can follow us on Instagram at MN Family Council and subscribe to us on YouTube to watch our content. Get the facts, stand for truth. Mm-hmm.